What's up everybody, I am back from vacation and I have a ton of pictures to go through and a few new tutorials lined up, but for today's video, I want to address a question I got through Instagram about how do I deal with the fear at night when I go to these remote areas to take pictures of the Milky Way, and, you know, especially if you're by yourself. So I typed up some information and I'm gonna kind of read through it and just give my tips and pointers of how to relieve that anxiety you might have if you're going out, especially at night, um, to some strange place you've never been to. So the first thing I wanna talk about, and one of the easiest things you can do to decrease the anxiety is to scout out the location uh, during the day. If you go there during the day, you could kind of familiarize yourself with the area. So when you return at night, you're not as anxious and you're aware of your surroundings. So that's probably the easiest thing to do to kind of reduce some of that fear you know, especially if you're by yourself. Now, we don't always have that luxury to travel to places um, during the day, you know, say we get there a little late or whatever. And the next best thing is to use the internet. Research as much as possible about the area. Um, research using pictures and video so you could kind of familiarize yourself virtually. And that's another great way. It's not the same as going there, but at least it'll kind of give you some general ideas. Um, maybe you could scout out the hike. Uh, they have some virtual hikes now. I try and do some virtual hikes. And I know on Google, um, sometimes people walk with the, the Google cameras down the path so you can kind of see what it's like before you go. Um, you definitely want to do your homework about the area. And that includes knowing where the nearest town is. Uh, what the weather is going to be like, and if there's any potential deadly animals in the area. And these are all things to take into consideration. Now, a lot of photographers um, travel to remote areas where cell phone service is horrible, so I recommend not relying on technology always. You know, you want to know what the distance is to the nearest town because if your car breaks down, your cell phone's not working, you may have to hike to civilization or to a road that has uh, more people driving by in case you had to hitchhike into town or ask for help or whatever. Um, I even like to bring um, a small compass like this that actually just pins on to whatever. Usually I pin it on to my book bag and now just give me a little sense of direction as well. Um, bring plenty of supplies like water and food just in case you're stranded for a few days, you never know. And even a, a water filtration system of some sorts is also handy. Uh, just have this stuff, take these precautions, um, play it safe. That's why I always tell people, especially if you're going by yourself, because you have to make sure you can rely on yourself and, you, and not panic. So if you have all these you know, things taken care of, that will reduce the risk of panic. Also a, a way to make fire as well. I want to include that. Now you also wanna pay attention to the weather because if you're up in the mountains, let's say, it might be 80 degrees out during the day and you're hot and you're wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt. And if you're dressed for that type of weather and you're not taking consideration that you're in the mountains and that the temperature could drop into the 40s at night, you could run the risk of hypothermia. Uh, so you wanna make sure you have the right uh, attire for the right weather. Uh, I particularly like the zip-off pants for this because during the day it's hot and I can wear my shorts and then at night when the temperature drops I can zip on the lower half of my pants and that way I'm a little bit warmer and I always typically bring a fleece and a few other articles of clothing for nighttime. Um, I also like to keep a bivy or, or lightweight sleeping bag in my car for an emergency because like I said it usually gets a lot colder at night especially in mountain areas. Some areas might be prone to flash floods, so that's something also to keep track of. Depending on the location, you might have to watch out for certain animals. The environment that I am going to will dictate the protection I bring. So let's say if I go to a desert and I know there's gonna be rattlesnakes, I'll wear higher boots that are thicker, and I'll also wear snake gaiters sometimes, which will wrap around my ankle and give me protection from a snake bite. Uh, they're very similar to shin guards, but they cover your whole ankle. And um, yeah, it's just something to take into consideration, especially if you're by yourself. If you get bit by a rattlesnake, you might only have an hour before uh, something bad happens to you. So uh, just keep these things in mind. If I'm going into bear country, 
I like to bring a bell so it's making some noise, especially if I'm alone, or I'll play a podcast or some music on my phone just so it sounds like there's more people than there actually is. I also like to bring a small air horn, some bear mace, and a knife as uh, other lines of defense. If I could carry a firearm or travel with a firearm, I would um, do that, but that's a little bit trickier, you know, going state to state with firearms. So if you can, I would bring that. And lastly, just make sure you let somebody know where you're going, especially if you're traveling alone. Uh, God forbid you need to be rescued and that you have no cell phone service. At least this person knows where you're at. And if you haven't checked in by a certain date or a certain time, they could start a rescue party. Um, you can't always rely on that technology, especially GPSs. Uh, if a lot of times a GPS will try and take me down these crazy dirt roads that that turn out to be dead ends and you know so if that happens make sure you bring plenty of fuel uh, try and research those roads before traveling down them ask a local that, that's like the biggest source of information too is uh, talking to the locals in the area yeah so combating fear is pretty easy if you're well prepared you have an exit strategy um, you have the knowledge of your environment and you bring along some types of protection you know you always want to have something and not need it then need it and not have it so thank you guys for listening i hope this helps with any anxiety issues you have uh, traveling alone or going out to these areas at night and happy shooting i'll hopefully have some new tutorials up soon and i'm also going to put uh, amazon links below for a bunch of stuff a bunch of gear that i use that i recommend for you know basically everything we talked about so thank you guys for listening. Take care. Bye.